Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Hi, oh you're gonna you're gonna work for your meal, huh? You're gonna work for your meal, huh? Gonna do some work quad alluring? There we go. There we go. We're happy. We're happy. We're we're so happy that they'll just oh the the message just came down from the brain to say stop luring you dummy. <laughs> now we're doing a happy death at her. She was a real pisser to get feeding. Um, force feeding, of course, first. Uh, then got her on uh, frozen thawed geckos, and from the geckos, uh, from the geckos, she she got uh, she went on to mice. Uh, first live mice, then frozen thawed. Did you scent them at all with the geckos? Uh, I did. Occasionally, I use some gecko spit, uh, which uh, is the ideal uh, way of uh, scenting, because uh, they they like gecko spit apparently. <laughs> Hi there. This is the sibling of the one we just saw before. Oh, you flicked that in your water bowl. Careful you don't bite your tail. Careful you don't bite your tail. Uh-huh, I see that little head movement. You're following it. You're following it. If you twitch again, I'll give it to you. There you go. Whoa, good <laughs> job. Now, she was a great feeder right from the uh, beginning. And you can see the size difference of her over her sister. Um, these are F2 generation uh, smooth death adders from Papua New Guinea, Irin Jawa. Um, which means that... Uh, the original wild caught species are their grandparents. So, uh, uh, their grandparents had babies, which uh, eventually the babies had babies. So, these are the granddaughters of the original uh, ones. Uh, matter of fact, the mother is still in the other room, and, and dad is right here. Uh, He's not in with uh, the female right now because he drives her nuts. It's not breeding season and that's all he has on his mind and just doesn't eat. So I put him in his bachelor quarters here. Oops, wrong one. Uh, here where he feeds and rests and contemplates sex. <laughs> <clears throat> Typical male. <laughs> Typical male. Are you looking for this? Yes, you are. Okay, your turn. Just a second. Now, I, normally I don't dry these off, but for these guys, I dry them a little bit just to reduce the amount of uh, shake and bake that they accumulate on the rodent. These are Fields Vipers, Pseudocerastes feldii. Uh, they're Middle Eastern uh, snakes. They're cousins to Pseudocerastes arachnoides, the one with the spider uh, tail appendage, which is the ultimate evolution of a caudal lure. It actually looks like a camel spider, and it attracts birds and lizards and all the things that it would prey upon. Unfortunately, uh, they're only found in Iran, and it's not likely that uh, we're going to see them in the, in the hobby. Uh, uh, Iran is, as you know, currently not friendly with many Western countries, so uh, not likely to see it. But really nice snakes to keep. I've been keeping them for a long time. Uh, very, very 
very uh, interesting snakes do more of a head fake uh, rather than actually strike and bite. Uh, just, uh, just very cool snakes to keep with their little uh, eye horns. Uh, oh, is that going to be a new Apple product, eye horns? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe around Halloween, um, but uh, they're very neat snakes. Uh, combination hemorrhagic neurotoxic venom, uh, typical of animals that would feed on rodents and lizards. And they happily munch away. Because, because of their general inactivity, they've become uh, uh, obese, and that's not good for breeding or for their health in general. Hello, this is our speckled rattlesnake. This is the female. Now, this is what I was talking about. Uh, she's got quite the booty on her. And that's why, you know, she gets relatively small food items uh, every two weeks. Also, she pooped in preparation for our visit, uh, uh, so we'll have to take care of her. You know, the babies are beautiful and they breed pretty readily, but the babies are a nightmare to, uh, to get feeding. Um, so I'm not likely to breed these two again. It just was too much labor intensive uh, activity, uh, poor results in the end, as well as uh, Crofab doesn't work too well and any bite by these guys would be a rather expensive, painful affair. There you go. You happy now, huh? You happy, huh? You're not, you don't do happy uh, speckled rattlesnake, do you? Huh? You're a little weirded out by the camera? Well, there's your close-up for the day. <clears throat> so we'll come back and clean up the poop after we're done feeding. She can uh, happily munch that. Now there's a discussion about uh, um, acrylic uh, windows and enclosures. Uh, you can see that they dirty fast and you have to be careful when you clean them because they all scratch up. I mean they are cheap cages relatively uh, but that's one of the disadvantage of acrylic over glass. Now we're going to do the male. He likes his hut. Don't In you? launch position. Now, my long forceps are, are not working right now. They've been eaten uh, by the Clorox and by uh, water and everything else. Uh, so I'm using the short tongs today, uh, which is never a really good thing. Again, he's, uh, he's a chubby fellow, so he gets reduced ration and, uh, um, you know, slowly take his weight down a little bit more. We'll see if Miss Crate's interested in some food, huh? she is. Oh, good job, Miss Crate. Miss Crate is a Malayan crate. 
Bungerus candidus. They have both presynaptic and postsynaptic neurotoxins. And they're quite lethal. Even a very small snake like this can, uh, can kill you. And once those presynaptic neurotoxins bind to your synapse, it's done. It needs to be uh, replaced by your body, which can take some time. So even after a bite, you can still have a number of uh, physical deficits. You can, depending on where the venom attaches, you could be on a respirator for months. You could lose your ability to speak or walk or coordinate your hand movements. Uh, all that's possible from a bite uh, from a crate. Now, crate's eyes are unique to the uh, to the venomous snake uh, world. Is their their pupils are fixed and dilated because they're mostly nighttime operators. So their eyes are designed to let in the most uh, light possible, uh, so they can see very well in the dark, and they're very hesitant uh, to come out in bright light. And that's why you don't see me, uh, uh, you know, shoot with bright lights. And uh, eh, she doesn't even like to come out during the day. And a lot of times will just take her food back into her hut and disappear. Yeah, this is a rare treat to actually have her out here eating. You know, uh, primarily a snake eater like the uh, king cobra um, they're really not designed to eat rodents but certain species of crates um, especially this uh, uh, species uh, uh, will readily take rodents in captivity so that means that they're pretty accustomed to taking them in the wild now these are commonly found around dwellings because people make the best habitats for snakes because they had, ooh, she, <laughs> she is a touchy girl um, crates uh, like to dwell around homes and crawl through them during the nighttime in search of rodents or primarily snakes and what are the other snakes in your house looking for rodents because people are messy and they uh, they uh, they leave their droppings everywhere, and this makes uh, very good uh, uh, food uh, for uh, visiting rat snakes. The rat snakes eat the rodents. The crates eat the rat snakes. Uh, and unfortunately, oh, you're going to work your way to the other end, or you can't decide. Uh, Oh, she's looks like she's coming up to the other end. Reverse, reverse. <laughs> oh no, we're going back to the back end. I'm just gonna chew up and down on this rat until I get it right, <laughs> mouse. Okay, well let's let her go. Um, she's a sweetie. Uh, she's really no trouble to work with. Uh, you hardly ever see her. Um, that's the uh, Malayan crate. Hi, you want something else to eat? Huh? something else to eat? No, don't look at the light. You missed. There you go. That's Miss Whitetail. Unfortunately this season she threw only slugs. Because it would be very nice to have some baby white tail uh, lance heads. Oh, is your tail still unshedded? Oh, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, am I going to have to uh, grab that uh, once you're finished eating and pull it off?
nom nom. Huh. Are you deciding that Mr. Mr. Camera is too close or that is a reflection of somebody trying to take your tasty meal so you're going to retreat? Gravity is not helping you, huh? How's that? I know I touched it, I'm sorry. Nope, not using any meat hooks today, huh? Just the regular uh, ratcheting uh, teeth. Okay, so let's uh, close this and let her uh, enjoy her meal and uh, move on to our next critter. There you go. <coughs> hmm, excuse me, folks. Oh, I see your little snoot. I see your little snoot. Come on. Come on, Mr. Popia. Come on. There you are. Hello, dude. How you doing? I guess since you're coming out, you would like to eat something, huh? Oh, you would. Okay. So there's Mr. Popia. He's another good guy. He's very, very easy to work with and a uh, good feeder and just just a beautiful snake. Uh, your classic, uh, you know, green tree pit viper sort of thing. Uh, uh, he's a good guy. And, you know, I think we'll probably see him later up on his perch because uh, he's need to go to the warm part of the cage uh, to uh, warm up and digest his food. Although he is getting heat from the light below uh, Miss Crate's cage, who's trying to spit out some uh, debris that she ingested uh, uh, during th that uh, mouse episode, which you saw previously. Okay, you weirded out by the camera, dude? All right, well, let's just let him go because, of course, we've got lots of other things to do. Coco was just spotted in Miss Pink's cage. A big, big thing. We'll retrieve that later once she has her mouth full of something that I'm going to feed her. Uh, you know, I could probably get it out, but she would probably lunge at me, which is something I don't like Kaboom Vipers to do. <laughs> well, it's time to release the Kraken. He's in shed. And uh, just, he's probably out of blue, and knowing him, uh, I will not, uh, he will not hesitate to feed. I have my, his favorite brown shoes on, which affords me a little bit more protection than those damn sneakers. <laughs> that was ridiculously close. As soon as he hears the cage clang, uh, he'll start huffing and make an appearance. He's moving. Come on, dude. Normally I would... Uh, I would stick the food at the end, but he would uh, he would chomp it uh, and withdraw into his hut, which I don't necessarily want him to do because we want to be able to see him a little bit, <clears throat> especially since I invited the audience online to uh, participate. Where is the pooper scooper? I think it's where it is. Hello, Elvis. I'm not going to take your rat. I will take your poop, though. Or that's better known as processed 
rack. Wow, listen to him puff and puff. You think you just stole gold from him. <laughs> <laughs> you are rather raspy. Yeah. I think probably because his blowhole is co partially covered, covered with, up, his, yeah. with rat. Well, that and, you know, the nose holes are covered in skin. It's yes, yes. to come off. All right, well, let's, uh, let's shut the door and not tempt uh, his anger <clears throat> and let him eat. And move on to our next uh, project, which is to move the young ringed water cobras.